It's always Gold FM for us at Golden Point, Raki Raki. Gold FM is number one in Lusaka. Gold FM is Nandi's best radio station. It's always Gold FM with us here in Singatoka. Old is Gold and Gold FM is number one here in Lusaka. Singatoka loves classic hits on Gold FM. You listen to Gold FM here in Tawa. We love Gold FM in Bang. We've got beautiful beaches, people and Gold FM in Raki Raki. Lusaka loves the classic hits on Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Tonight, family fears the worst for father and daughter missing since Sunday afternoon. Driti's lawyers ask for suspended sentence and heavy rain results in flash floods overnight. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. A search is on for 46-year-old Francis Shalendra Deo and his 11-year-old daughter Samantha. The last contact that the Deo family had with the two was a missed phone call at 10.30 p.m. on Sunday. Christopher Chand reports police in Nandi are tonight searching a river in Tunalia, Nandi. Police in Nandi were today combing this Irish crossing near Tunalia in Nandi. The wife is praying for the safe return of her family. I know that the Lord is great. I have always believing in the Lord. I've been always believing in the Lord. And I know He will find a way to bring them back to me. I'm always out there on the road trying to save everyone's lives. And I know that the Lord cannot do anything bad as such to my family. 46-year-old Francis Shalendra Deo and his daughter, 11-year-old Samantha, were taking an American woman to Nandi on Sunday. They were in their black taxi registration, LT3253, on Sunday afternoon when they left for Nandi airport. We don't have any idea because after he left the airport, I don't know what happened then. Whether he managed to come towards this side or... I don't know, I don't know what to say. While police are still searching nearby areas in Tunalia, Anjani is hoping that the two are still alive. Try their best to get me some good news by this afternoon. And that is what I'm looking forward to. And I know that the Lord is going to hear my prayers. He just cannot cheat on me. And I'm just pleading to the Lord just to get my family back in one piece to me. That is all. I don't need anything else. It's now two days since the father and daughter went missing. Anjani says she told her husband not to drive back at night and to spend the night with family in Nandi. Police spokesperson Anna Nesoro confirms the road leading to the relative's house was flooded on Sunday night. It's feared that the taxi may have been swept away in these waters. Christopher Chand. FBC News. Mitigation and sentencing submissions were heard before Judge Justice Paul Madigan this afternoon in the case of Pitan Riti, convicted last week of inciting to mutiny. The former Land Force commander will be sentenced tomorrow afternoon. Chanel Sivan reports. Driti's counsel Philemone Vosorongo is seeking a suspended sentence, asking for a minimum term of three years imprisonment. Vosorongo told the Suva High Court that Driti has been unemployed since October 24, 2010, and his wife is the sole breadwinner for the family. Vosarongo says Driti has sought employment locally and overseas, but was unable to find work. Driti has no previous convictions, and after resigning from the RFMF, lost his rank. His lawyer says he accepts the court's judgment and is remorseful for the actions that transpired in 2010. He says Driti gave his full cooperation to the Fiji police force and maintained his loyalty to the commander. The prosecution submission heavily leaned on a case from Papua New Guinea and asked the court to consider it. In court it was heard that due to changes in the crime's decree, the sentence for inciting to mutiny has been reduced from life imprisonment to 15 years. Between August 1, 2010 and October 31, 2010 in Suva, Driti, knowing that Manasa Tangi Zakimbao is serving in the Fiji military forces, attempted to seduce him 
of his duty and allegiance to Fiji. Driti also in that period uttered seditious words to effect the AG should be removed and he's moving the government away from the chartered cause. He also said the commander RFMF did not have the leadership appointment and needed to be removed and if the president refused to accept the proposal, then there would be no other option but to remove his excellency. The state had argued during the trial that in saying this, Driti intended to bring hatred and contempt or to incite disaffection against the government. Last month, Justice Madigan overturned the unanimous decision of the assessors who found Driti not guilty. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. All non-essential leave for the Fiji police force has been deferred from today to ensure maximum visibility over the festive period. Chief Operations Officer Assistant Commissioner of Police Rusiate Tundravu has directed all divisional police commanders and the commanding officer central division to align their operations and ensure an incident-free festive season. Vosita Kotewasawasa reports. Policemen and women will be walking the beat in numbers, ensuring the safety of the public, especially during odd hours. These are some of the areas that uh, we will be strengthening our visibility. Only yesterday it was revealed that police are receiving increased reports of attacks in the capital city during the night. Usually it's a large group of boys who target easy prey. Officers will also be monitoring popular night sports, conducting consistent checks on the restriction of minors from entering nightclubs. We have been uh, identifying uh, that is on our main highways, uh, picnic spots, nightclubs, outlet, and other areas that are uh, often uh, uh, frequented by uh, also criminals and unwarranted elements within the society. Members of the public are also being advised that roadblocks will be erected at certain locations throughout the division during this period. ACP Tundravu is requesting members of the public to also do their part by taking ownership of their own individual safety and be more cautious. Vusita Kotemasawasa, FBC News. Last night's heavy rain brought some flooding to Waindamutambu settlement in Kornivia near Nausori earlier today. Close to 100 homes were affected by the floodwaters. Apisalome Dokar reports. The Waindamutambu settlement in Kornivia, just outside Nausori, was flooded in the early hours of this morning, and residents had to help each other out. We were just awake. When the, time, the flood started coming, we wake up. And uh, we thought the water won't come inside. When the... When heavy rain start coming, the thing start coming a little bit. And suddenly it uh, come all inside the house. This one, uh, 4 o'clock, uh, my wife uh, told me that flood is coming up. So I get up and come here. There's this fella. So I move this side to the uh, When that, that lady called me at the 4 o'clock, uh, 4.30, called me um, and tell me my house is flooded. Eh? Water come inside, eh? then I wake up. And I wake up and come out and I go there. Officers from the Nakasi police station were quickly to the scene, getting people to move to safety. Like, uh, actually, we just received this report lately this morning. And uh, we received a report that uh, when the Mundamu settlement is underwater. So that was the main reason that uh, we, the Nakasi police, have to come and attend to this report. Actually, we are just here to advise and uh, make sure that uh, all the people here in the settlement are safe. So uh, we have uh, uh, created uh, a house which is underwater and also we have going around um, advising houses that uh, they have to take precaution during this weather. Police have prepared Nabulo Hall in Nakasi as the evacuation centre for people here in Waindamundamu. But residents have told FBC News they will see if the weather worsens, floodwaters are back on the rise, then evacuation becomes a priority. Heavy rain overnight also caused some flooding in Rakiraki, Singatoka, Lotoka in the Western Division and parts of the Central and Eastern Division, forcing road closures. Apisalome Voka, FBC News. Coming up, human rights issues. Where are we lagging behind? Today FM is number one here in Singapore. We are today FM in Lambasa. It works! My favorite station in Nandi is Today FM. I love Today FM because they play the awesome, awesome song. A lot of us love Today's kid music. I love Today FM because they play all my songs. We love Today FM at Vunivar Lambasa. Yeah, it rocks! I love Today FM because it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.
Bulan 2 saya betul FM, enak bandua ya rakyat Bula FM nampak dua inosor Gue etapa ke buat teko lesaan bula FM ngan Bula FM nampak dua ya korbu Bula FM nampak dua ya sawah Bula FM nampak dua ya lotokan Bula Nampak dua nampak bula FM ya mbak Bula FM nampak dua ya nasir in Singapore Kalau kita lihat ke warung ya nampak bula FM ya lotokan Kalau kita lihat ke warung ya nampak bula FM ya nampak dua ya nasir Bula FM nampak dua ya nasir Welcome back. This is FBC News. At the present time, Fiji is not doing very well in terms of respecting and understanding human rights. That's the word from the chair of the NGO Coalition on Human Rights, Shamima Ali, as Fiji celebrates Human Rights Day. Epeli Tokowasa reports. According to Ali, there are a lot of human rights issues Fiji still need to address. Well, at this point in time, we're not doing too well. Our Human Rights Commission has been suspended from the world body, uh, and we need to get that on track, and hopefully we can uh, as we go towards election. So, uh, you know, there are many issues that are still hanging in the air that we haven't addressed uh, in terms of human rights. Ali says some of the political, civil, environmental, and media rights need to be addressed properly. Though we have good legislation and so on, but women are still suffering out there. We are still uh, having a lack of access to justice issues around that. We have environmental rights. You know, that's another thing we need to look at. We're seeing our environment being destroyed, uh, you know, gradually. Today's celebration in Suba also paid tribute to Nelson Mandela, who was a great freedom fighter. I think it's very appro appropriate in terms of race relations in this country, as well as for human rights in this country, that we remember this great leader. And we also encourage the leaders, wherever they are, whether they're community leaders, church leaders, uh, uh, political leaders, wherever they, you know, whoever they are, women leaders, that we try to see that as an example of what a great leader can do. International Human Rights Day was celebrated in Suba at the Civic Center. Epeli Tukwasa, FBC News. Volunteers working in Fiji were hosted by the Australian High Commission last night. The event was organized to celebrate the co contributions the volunteers made to social and economic development of the country. 80 Australian volunteers have been in Fiji since January last year, helping to reduce poverty and improving the lives of vulnerable and marginalized communities. Their assignments work directly across the three objectives, focusing on education, health, community resilience and economic opportunities. The evening featured volunteer presentations and a photo exhibit highlighting their experiences. I encourage you to remember the difference you're making to the lives of the people. because. As volunteers, you're developing local capacity and, and promoting cross-cultural understanding by building people-to-people -people linkages between Australia and Fiji. And this is in line with the three objectives of our Fiji country strategy. International Volunteers Day was celebrated in Fiji last week. Members of the public can share their thoughts on the late former President of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, in a condolence book which is now open at the South African High Commission in Suva. Head of Mission Abby Matoto Pindelo says the book will remain open until Monday. A memorial service to celebrate the life of Mandela, which was scheduled to be held on Friday, will now take place on Monday. The service will be held at 12.30 p.m. at the Centenary Church in Suva. Mandela, the revered statesman who emerged from prison after 27 years to lead South Africa out of decades of apartheid, passed away last Thursday at age 95. We turn to sports now, and so Jamie, despite two losses, I hear the Flying Fijians have hailed the Northern Tour a success. You heard right, Jackie. The PNC win earlier in the year and the Northern Tour have seen the Flying Fijians improve their world ranking. We'll have more on this after the break. Also up ahead, powerlifters return from a successful Oceania Championships. Details coming up. Deskit Harkan Radio Fiji 2 is number one in Singatoka. My name is Sakhi Nivasi. My name is Prem Chandra. Deskit Harkan Radio Fiji 2 is my name. I am Deskit Harkan Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2 is very good for me. Radio Fiji 2 is number one in Singatoka. My name is Deskit Harkan Radio Fiji 2. I am Nanukura Kikiri Rata. And we are on Radio Fiji 2. We are on Radio Fiji 2. You are on Radio Fiji 2. You are on Radio Fiji 2. देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजी टू 
Welcome back to FBC Sports. Our powerlifters returned for the Oceania Championships in New Zealand last night with two gold medals and a silver. Faced with a lack of financial support, the team was cut down to four, but these setbacks did not deter the powerlifters. Shelvin Chan reports. 60-year-old Saini Mili Turner and 17-year-old Isaiah Elder begged gold medals. Turner set a new record in the Masters division, while young Isaiah broke the sub-junior squad record. I'm happy because we broke a lot of records, Oceania records. I could say for Auntie Mili, she broke her Masters 3 records nine times. And because um, she keeps setting the records with every attempt, and Isaiah with his squad for a sub junior is really good. I'm going against some of the world's best there. Eh? 16 year old Maria Chong was the baby of the team. She won a silver. A win on the international stage has her eager for more. A really great experience competing with the very best all over the world. Uh, and I hope I do better next year. I'm going to try and get my gold next year. Powerlifting Fiji believes they deserve some attention from donors and sponsors because they are the men and women bringing glory to Fiji. I just feel great. I mean, uh, this is what powerlifters always do. Uh, whenever we go to comps, uh, we always try our best. We always use that word compete, uh, not uh, participate. So I believe that's where we always feel strong and that's where we always uh, come back uh, with medals. The Oceania meet just finished. Next up is the world event in South Africa in June. Powerlifting hopes that by this time they will have sponsors willing to send a bigger contingent. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. The Flying Fijians' recent tour to Europe has brought some respectability to the team's world ranking. The co coaching staff have been encouraged by this result but still has to alleviate some niggling weaknesses that plague the team. Talin Dawakadaka reports. The Flying Fijians end the year slightly better than the last. At one point, the team was ranked 16th, our lowest ever. A maiden victory in the Pacific Nations Cup and two wins out of four games in the recent Europe Tour has improved the team's position on the international ladder. We had a good result, uh, despite the losing to the Barbarians and some of the, uh, the senior players didn't play in that game. Um, overall, uh, we started with a... Uh, 20 in, in the ranking and we end up uh, 11th and also all of us is a successful, successful tour. Our set piece problems have always been an enigma and the coach is looking to have the issue resolved in time for a crucial match next year which will decide our spot in the 2015 Rugby World Cup. And uh, we had a uh, real talk with the, the, the local boys, especially the, uh, our core the front rows, so we need to address that uh, uh, situation before we go on the qualifying round against the Cook Islands. Flying Fijian's manager, Joe Brown, is expected to table a report soon on the Europe tour. Chalendo Dakadak, FBC Sports. For the third year running, Northern Districts have failed to field any teams in the Chris Sines National Club Championship. According to Fiji Football, the North did not submit any names because none of their districts were able to finish their league season. Selvin Chand has more. The NCC finals will start this Friday, minus any teams from the North. There are a few reasons for Northern clubs not making the trip, money being one. When to bring about 20 players, it will cost you about two and a half to three thousand uh, dollars. It becomes a costly affair. We will, we will see what we can do. Maybe we'll have to devise something for the North. Uh, um, little later on, but the first and foremost, they will need to get organized. They will need to have a regular competitions, club competitions. However, ample warning had been given to the districts to finish their local club competitions before the NCC. Competition sent out to everybody, and they did not respond. We know very well that Lambasa did not have full competitions. Uh, Sabu Sabu was having it on a basis. 
Bracketti also had some, they had some competition, but they did not uh, fully comply with the requirements. Club players who are not in action for their districts have a chance to impress national selectors who will be present during the NCC. Uh, it gives an opportunity to our local club players to come to that level. Not everybody gets selected to the district team. And uh, we have some talents available, hidden talents here and there, and this gives them the opportunity to showcase their talents. Chris Sainz National Club Championship starts Friday and ends Sunday. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. The International Basketball Federation's Oceania Board has recognized the 3 on 3 format as ideal for development across the region and will seek ways to have it included in tournaments such as the Pacific Games and Pacific Mini Games. The idea was discussed during the Oceania Board meeting in Wellington, New Zealand last week. Basketball Fiji are adamant that the abbreviated code will aid their development work and prove beneficial to their plans to attract new players. It's a good incentive for the sport of basketball as a whole. Uh, shortening the game of basketball is, uh, will make it uh, more faster and entertaining and it should attract uh, a lot of interest from the young kids. And um, we, we, we Basketball Fiji support the uh, initiative of our international federation to promote the 3-on-3 uh, three, three three event. And uh, we have plans to uh, hold some, uh, some of that uh, new format uh, next year. The Oceania board has also hinted that Fiji could be the likely host for the Oceania Under-19 Championships in June next year. That's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. <laughs>
मिर्ची एफ एम मिर्ची एफ एम इज हॉट ताकि हर घर में खाली मिर्ची एफ एम बजे मिर्ची एफ एम इज हॉट बेस्ट साउंड बेस्ट म्यूजिक मिर्ची एफ एम रॉक सिंह का नंबर वन स्टेशन है मिर्ची एफ एम मिर्ची एफ एम इज हॉट मिर्ची एफ एम इज नंबर वन इन नर्सरी हम लोग मिर्ची एफ एम रोज सुनता है मिर्ची एफ एम डागो मामा मिर्ची एफ एम